All right, so we got the Deep Dwarf and other creature mysteries in Warhammer 40k lore. Let's go to the other man. It's finally spooky season, and you know what that means. It's a perfect opportunity to talk about some creepy and obscure mysteries from the grim dark future of Warhammer 40k. Oh, snap. From a beloved techno-archaeologist who disappeared deep beneath the surface of Mars, leaving behind only a single clue to what happened. A deeply disturbing box recording of his final moments. A strange wow. species of aliens that scientists haven't been able to explain. And although originally thought to just be void-born pests, when attacked, demonstrated some truly frightening powers. And if the accounts of one particular madman oh, who was that? believed, the secret of what these things actually are is absolutely mind-blowing. We're also going to be talking about a theory that says that everything that we think we know about the warp is wrong, and how there's an area within the Sea of Souls that even the gods themselves are afraid to go to. We're going to be talking about all that and a I whole mean, lot more, but before we dive headfirst into the grimdark, a quick shout out to this video's sponcer. Oh, nice. Are you too busy to cook this fall, but still want to make sure you're eating okay, healthy. Okay, let's be honest. The one thing that I do know about the warp, store, listen, I'm a well newbie, well okay? I, I, I'm a newbie at Warhammer. Well. And one thing I'm going to say about, uh, like, the, the warp is about that, bro. I heard that the warp is the wild, wild west, bro. After you die, you go there, your soul just roams around. Like, it's the wild, wild west. You guys can do it. I think, like, your soul just, it just, like, sits there or whatever. I heard that there's like a lot of like you know um all deep dark stuff that goes on in the warp and you really don't want to go through the warp i also know that you can like travel through the warp and stuff like that i'm a huge uh to get to like other like places and stuff like that so to be honest with you uh i definitely don't even want to like find out any secret dark uh nasty mysteries about the warp so we're definitely going to some of today um shout out to this guy i think his name is uh west hammer i think um he does like a lot of like uh warhammer and obviously if you guys are looking at this now he's doing ad right now this is why like it's muted easy. i don't like to skip and the ads because i'm like you know what like i'm ready to this guy's video just out of respect that i you know that um, or click on the link below and use that like i just reacted to the entire thing so off um, your first I, I think it should be wrapping Again, up Let's go to head it. on over to factor 75.com or click on the link below and use code westhammer 50 to get 50 percent off your oh first thank box. you guys so much for uh, watching all the warhammer videos stuff like that that means a lot man thank y'all so much man let's go right to it the mysterious entities known as the umbra Umbra, the Milky okay. Way galaxy of the 41st millennium has no shortage of strange and bizarre Xenos life forms, most of which have either gone undocumented or the study and cataloging of is only in its infancy. Amongst them, the creatures known as the Umbra are perhaps the strangest. They appear as smooth black spheres that live within the void of space and are often attracted to areas that resonate with the warp. Voidfarers have traded tales of these things for centuries, of hundreds if not thousands of them showing up and hovering around their ships, being particularly attracted to their warp engines. For the longest time, they seemed relatively harmless and were originally viewed as just a pest. But the reality was that that couldn't possibly be further from the truth. There was one particular instance where an Umbra managed to make it inside one of the ships. This is a brief snippet from the account of Navigator Unkli Nakis, who witnessed the event. Observing quarantine procedure, the officer of the watch ordered the pest destroyed and summoned stormtroopers to that end. No sooner had they opened fire than all hell broke loose. Uh -oh. The creature was able to manipulate areas of darkness, drawing upon matter like oil from those zones of deepest shadow. The cracks between the bulkheads, beneath crates of supplies, even from the pupils of our own eyes. This assemblage of umbros material was deployed in the most horrific fashion a confluence of hooks, blades, teeth, and the like. Seeing his squad slaughtered and the barrage ineffectual, the commissar ordered a retreat and vented the hangar to the board. Yeah, bro, yeah, I'm, I'm leaving too. I can't lie to you. These were not particularly uncommon. There would be many reports of these creatures turning up in great quantities across the Imperium with alarming frequency. Most of the time, they were easily dispersed, though at other times, they would turn violently murderous. Entire ships have been lost to these shadow smiths. The satellites Dang. ripped apart. Even planetary colonies. They're just taking out ships. Space. That's crazy. Entities, which only the mightiest weapons can harm. The only thing that truly seems to hurt them or at the very least scare them off is great quantities of light. But even that is a double edged sword as casting that much light on them creates shadows that they can manipulate. A single oh. one of these spheres having the potential to create armies of eldritch shadow monstrosities and a hurricane of bleated limbs and snapping jaws. At one point, oh, one of the Umbra no. was dissected in order to be studied. It was said to have a surface that was uniformly black with a carapace temperature that remained at 10 degrees Celsius despite the application of melta beams or liquid nitrogen. It had no obvious means of motion, yet in confinement would hover at about head level. It had no respiratory, digestion, or excretion tracts, 
and thus was determined not to be an organism in the traditional sense. Bro, what type of creature is this? Bro, this thing came from like, bro, like, bro, don't even, he don't even got a digestive system. How is he able to, bro, how is he supposed to use the bathroom? That's crazy. Now, after the scientists had completed their physical observations of the specimen, they decided to euthanize it by exposing its cell to a continuous blast of strong light. Dang, they sent in six illuminator drones, pre-configured to adopt evenly spaced positions around the subject. The illuminators were activated at full strength for a period of about 30 seconds, and the subject's body appeared as if it was brightening. It was in that moment that all of the humans that were witnessing the execution suddenly experienced intense cranial pain. They were assaulted by a barrage of mental images that depicted Turn it off. a vast humanoid figure splintering apart. Scenes of a turbulent warp storm, deep space, and a single word pulsing through their minds. Linger. As quickly as it began, the phenomena abruptly ended, and the dead Umbra dropped to the floor. The Umbra still have a lot of secrets, and the list of known facts about uh, them is nah, dwarfed yeah. by the Hey, we gotta throw these things but away. Whatever they actually are, and whatever their purpose is, they clearly have a demonstrable warp presence, and seem naturally drawn to areas that resonate with the uh, war. Nah. Yeah. Whether they be the hulls of void ships, or suspected points of access to the Eldar webway. Calculus Logai Beer of the Mechanicus theorized that the Umbra were but a minuscule portion of extra-dimensional creatures. Inquisitor Maturin Rally speculated that they were innately hostile to human life and may be seeking to purge those species within the physical universe that caused the warp to become such a turbulent Yo, what place. We do? There was also the account of the admittedly confessed heretic Curdo Salvador, who was burned at the stake after writing it. Man, he looked rough. Visited I was by the thirster in the dark. Her who dance moans, her who keeps her secrets breasted, her who came upon me and told and told. Time before she was born, she told. Time before all that. Wars in heaven and hell. This is his God voice. Rebels, lock horns triumphant, and old gods killed away. Killed, she says, all but one. Hid away he did, up to his old ways, tweaking and dabbling, poking and prodding. She says, came a time when he's done his work, wants to hide and watch, always watching. So into the warp he goes. Then she's born in the long ears brain, see, and she laughs out loud and chops him a million times and kicks the shards out into the cold to linger, she says, to linger like always. Oh, so that little if black thing is a girl? Believed, it would seem to insinuate that the Umbra are shards of a broken god, a broken oh, old one. Specifically, Ka, the one worshipped by the species known as the Hrud. This old one seemingly managed to escape the fate of his species at the conclusion of the war in heaven before ultimately being shattered by Slanesh during the fall of the Eldar Empire. But is this possible? Are the Umbra actually shards of an old one? Would it be possible for them to all come back together as an intact entity? Oh, we don't, we, we don't want that to happen. Going on here? There hasn't been a lot of information released on these guys in a long time, so it might be a mystery we unfortunately may never get an answer to Dang. the deep warp theory uh -oh. proponents of the deep warp theory believe uh -oh. that the entirety of what we've been shown of the immaterium so far in warhammer 40k is nothing but the tiniest most insignificant portion of it and that much like how the oceans of ancient terra were the deeper you go into its waters the stranger and more bizarre the entities you encounter i mean well that's just listen that's anything though you gotta understand that and i and i don't even mean like i don't even want to get dark or whatever but that's just an anything I mean, the, the ocean was like, that was an excellent comparison, by the way. But, like, the ocean, um, someone's history, um, a, a game's history. The more you, like, dive deeper into, like, into like one thing's history, you're going to find something, like, and I'm, I'm not going to sit here and act like that everybody has a deep, dark history where, you know, we were, like, Gotham villains or something like that. No. I'm just saying, like, whenever it comes to, like, like very like like ma like vast things like the ocean and and like a I don't know like a video game like a scary games history or like things like that. I'm not talking about like individual people like me and you. Like if you go down my history, uh, I was going crazy and I was some type of uh, and I was like and I was the penguins like you know uh, henchman or something like that. No, uh, I'm saying like you know stuff like the ocean, stuff like uh, Warhammer's uh, history, bro. Where like. If you like the more you explore, bro, you're going to find a lot of, you know, unknown things, you know, to the public and a lot of like, you know, creatures that you wouldn't even imagine. Like, bro, there's a reason why only 5% of our ocean has been discovered, bro. Imagine the other 95% of our ocean, bro. Imagine what's down there, bro. And then to be honest with you, bro, live your life. I don't, bro, I don't want to, I don't want to know what's down there, bro. 
Hey, to all the little fishies down there, live your life. I can't lie to you, bro. This is the realm of the Deep Warp, a kingdom built upon a foundation of rotting gods, the darkest, most turbulent depths of the Sea of Souls, an alien realm of psychic darkness where even demons and deities refuse to tread. To understand what the Deep Warp is, we can look at a real-world phenomena that takes place in our oceans each and every day, known yep. as a whale fall. When a whale dies, its body sinks to the ocean floor. Their corpse can often create a hyper-complex localized ecosystem that supplies substance to a variety of different deep-sea okay. organisms. It can take years or even decades for these carrion feeders to completely devour every last inch of the massive creature Dang. until all that remains is a lonely and forgotten skeleton. Dang. And all of these entities slink back away into the black. Proponents of the Deep Warp theory believe that much like the oceans of ancient Terra, the Sea of Souls works in a similar manner. That when a significantly powerful warp entity or great deity dies, its essence sinks deep beneath the turbulent tides into an infinite well of madness and insanity. Whereupon it will be consumed by creatures so alien and bizarre, it's impossible to even attempt to describe them. There are some who like to point to the existence of the Well of Eternity as evidence that the Deep Warp is in fact real. It is said to be a vast receptacle of knowledge and arcane power, the center of all reality, the place where time and space originated and ended. Uh, because, it, like, listen, what I learned is, right, and I'm sorry that I'm pausing the video a lot. I usually don't do that. I, I just let the video play. But, like, my thing is, right, because what I learned about the, uh, what I learned about the, uh, what, like, what I learned about, like, the, uh, what we call it, like, like, the, like, the warp or whatever, what I learned is that, I think they say like your thoughts or whatever manifest into like the warp. So like anything that you're thinking good or bad will like, you know, come along in a warp or something like that. If that was the case, bro, I wouldn't even be surprised if like, the, if like this really big, you know, a uh, big boss dude or whatever, a big boss girl or whatever die. And, you know, I just step into the warp one day because I want to get like some ice cream or whatever. And, you know, and I look down to the left and all I see is like, you know, and I was like, yo, wait, ain't that the king of whatever? Dang, they look discombobulated. Like, bro, like, I, I wouldn't even be surprised because, like, bro, if you really think about it, bro, anything and everything goes down in the war, bro. Yeah, bro. And I'm not talking, listen, the Diddy Rardies, bro. And listen, I, I, listen, you didn't hear from me, but let's just say, bro, I, I heard the, the Diddy parties. I heard that, uh, 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 that, you know, they, they snacking on that guy's body over there. I heard that, you know, that her neck just tastes like gushers over there, bro. It's the wild, wild west in the deep. So, uh, sorry, sorry, in a, uh, in a warp. So, to be honest with you, I wouldn't even be surprised if this whole, like, uh, you know, deep, dark warp thing, you know, is true. Because, I mean, bro, it, it's, bro, it's the warp, bro. Like, bro, everything in their, bro, everything in their mama happens in a warp. Like, all good and all bad happens in that warp. So, I mean, it is what it is. A place that even the chaos gods are afraid to go to. The concept of the warp is not just a stagnant realm of infinite energy in every direction and has distinct areas to it, some vastly more dangerous, turbulent, or unknowable than others, is an idea that was commonplace amongst the Thousand Sons of the Great Crusade right, yeah. era. For the most part, they were told to stick to what they refer to as the shoals of the Great Ocean and to never venture too deep, for humanity wasn't ready for that. However, oh, wow. the idea of the Deep Warp itself is not something that I have found within their writings. Most of the people who subscribe to the Deep Warp theory will often point to one particular passage where they believe it is mentioned in the novel The Path of Heaven by Chris Raitt. There are layers. There's stratum etherius, the shallow ways. There is stratum profundus, the greater arteries. If plunging deeper, there is stratum obscurus, the root of terror. No living man can navigate the deep ways. Even he could not. It's not a mirror. Who is it he? It moves like a living thing. It is a living thing. I touch it and it trembles. I do not have the eye, but I still have seen things. I have studied what they study. The complexity is immortal. The sea is Dang. an ocean. All know this. It has currents, it has depths, it has storms. Near the surface, you can see the cardomancer's light. You can follow it. You can use your Geller Aegis, and you are kept barred from the intelligences. But even then, you are just below the upper limits. Go deeper, and the Aegis shatters. The lights go out. The eye is blinded. When men say they traverse the warp, they boast. For no mortal does more than skim across eternity's face, like stones thrown by a child. We do not belong there. It is poison for us. And the deeper in, the worse the poison. It takes the power of a tormented sun just to puncture the shallowest shoals. No energy in our arsenal could possibly pierce further. String the reactors of a dozen battleships together, double their potential, and it still would not be enough. 
Although there does seem to be some evidence to support the existence of what we would consider to be the Deep Warp, it's important to remember that it's mostly just fan speculation. This is just a theory. Yeah. There's just not enough concrete evidence to point to other than a few key conversations in certain novels. The idea of the Deep Warp is something that I would love Games Workshop to explore a bit more in the future, but I hope they never give us too many definitive answers. It would just kind of ruin the whole cosmic horror vibe this theory has going on. The Mysterious Disappearance of Arkan Land Right, the earliest mention that we have of the famous techno-archaeologist Arkan Land comes from an old White Dwarf article where it was revealed that he discovered the STC fragments that contained the blueprints for the Land Raiders. Meaning that, yes, the Land Raiders are named as such due to the man that discovered them. He was always just this obscure background character that no one really knew anything about and just kind of served as a fun fact to know about Land Raiders. But that would all change in the Horus Heresy novel line, as he was a prominent character in several of the books and really came into his own. A lot of Warhammer fans, myself included, think he's an absolute treasured smart boy. I genuinely find him hilarious and charming. One of my absolute favorite inventions of his is a pet cyborg monkey. Now, monkeys have been extinct on Terra for tens of thousands of years, so he had to go off of their fossil records in order to recreate them. And he gave it a scorpion tail, because that's kind of what it looks like if you've just got bones to work with. When questioned about this by another individual who pointed out that their tail was probably prehensile and used to hang from branches, Arkin Land said that, that was absolutely ridiculous. What purpose would that serve? Monkeys were clearly deranged and venomous predators. Oh my I God. love this dude. However, oh. Arkin Land unfortunately suffers from the same fate that a lot of 40k characters do, wherein originally they're just a little bit of background fluff and then they become characters in their own right in the later novels. But that very first mention that we got of him didn't just tell us who he was, it told us how he died. As a techno-archaeologist, Land had dedicated his life to scouring the catacombs and tech vaults beneath the surface of Mars in order to recover fragments of STCs and pieces of ancient lost archaeotech from the Dark Age of Technology. It was because of his efforts that the Imperium has access to some of their greatest technology. At one point, he led a three-year expedition into the Librarius Ominous, which is an ancient underground library the size of a continent that stretches underneath the surface of Mars. You said a library is the size of... Wait, 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 hold on. Bro, it got every book in the... Bro, known to man! Bro, it got every book known to man in there, bro! They said that the library is the size of a continent. Bro got the library uh, uh, the, the size of Australia. Wowzers, that's crazy. It was here that he discovered not only the blueprints for the Land Raider pattern main battle tank, but also a universal land engine that would later become the basis of the Onagur Doomcrawler and patterns for anti-gravitic plates that would be utilized in the construction of land speeders. Again, named after him. In addition to this, he was able to map a region of the catacombs the size of a small nation. Now, despite his efforts, the vast library still had many secrets left to be uncovered. It was, however, years later, after the conclusion of the Horus Heresy, that Land would lead his fated second expedition into the library. He was never seen again, and only a single record of the expedition was ever uncovered. Bro died in the library? In the diary, wherein Land's panicked voice could be heard speaking about his team, how they were being picked off one by one by some unknown entity that was lurking in the darkness. Oh. I can't put into words just how dangerous of a place Mars Dang. actually is. There are all forms of mutants, rogue gay eyes, and unfathomable blasphemous machines. Bro, he got clipped in the, in the library, and bro. We can only imagine what ancient, unspeakable horrors dwell beneath its dunes. It's oh, worth bearing no. in mind for comparison that Mars is indeed the planet where the Catan known hey, as the Hey, I'm not going to Mars, bro. I personally don't believe the Void Dragon had anything to do with this disappearance, as the Mechanicum book makes it pretty clear that it's contained, but it is worth mentioning as it sets a pretty dangerous precedent for all manner of horrifying entities of impossible power running loose beneath Mars's red sands. What ultimately killed Land and his crew is subject to limitless debate. Many speculate that it was some type of predator, while others claim it was a psychic entity, or perhaps even a sentient virus. Whatever the case may be, whatever ultimately is lurking deep in the dark, perhaps it is simply proof that the secrets of the dark age of technology are best left to the shadows of mystery and prehistory. What is Dang, written in the man. Terminus Decree? The Terminus Decree is one of the most sacred and mysterious relics in the entirety of the Imperium's history. 
It is said that at any given point in time, only a single person alive knows of it, and that each and every one of those individuals was a supreme Grand Master of the Grey Knights chapter of Spain in the Chamber of Purity on Titan, inside of the tomb of Malkador the Sigilite, and is comprised of a single box, with instructions stating that it should only be opened when the death of humanity is at hand, when the clock finally strikes midnight and the long war comes to an end. Now, what exactly the Terminus Decree is still remains a mystery. I mean, technically, there could be anything inside of that box. Some believe that it contains an artifact of great and terrible power that can summon a force beyond comprehension that will single-handedly destroy all of mankind's enemies, while others speculate that it is a device capable of purging the warp itself of all demonic influence. Oh yeah, we need that. We need that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need that right there. We need that. And paving the way forward for a new golden age. While these theories are certainly optimistic, as something that is severely lacking in the grim darkness of the far future, I'm not entirely convinced. And that's for a couple of reasons. The first is that if it truly was a device that would bring about the salvation of humanity, why wouldn't they have used it yet? Secondly, Terminus literally means the end, and the sigil that is inscribed upon the box can only be found in one other location in the galaxy, the Golden Throne. This has led many to speculate that it contains instructions for shutting down the Golden Throne, thus allowing the Emperor to end his long vigil and finally be allowed to die. The more hopeful interpret this as that since the Emperor is a perpetual, he would be reborn, rising up to push back the darkness and lead humanity into the future once more. But there are a lot of unknowns when it comes to the Emperor's perpetualness. Not all perpetuals are the same. Sometimes they respawn in only a short period of time in the exact same location, and other times they pop up somewhere else. Yeah, look at yo, yo, this is the salamanders, right? Yeah, I gotta make sure my mic is on. Yeah, the salamanders. The galaxy. It could take seconds, minutes, years, decades, or even centuries. With this information in mind, shutting down the Golden Throne could be an apocalyptic scenario. The Astronomicon would fail, cutting off all communication and warp travel. The Emperor would die, thus bringing down his protective psychic barriers around the Soul System. And not to mention Vulcan's Doomsday Device that is directly linked to the Emperor's Pulse would detonate. If the Terminus Decree really is a Golden Throne user manual and details how to shut it down, then its use may be something as grimly simple as an option to let humanity go out on its own terms, a way of accepting the species' extinction with dignity. However, if we want to engage in a healthy dose of optimism, the Terminus Decree may be a set of instructions for the Emperor's revival. This would clarify why it hasn't been used yet, as the Emperor has supposedly been gathering his strength within the warp, and by all accounts is not ready to be revived yet. And considering that Malkador stood by the Emperor's side for thousands of years, knew more about him than any other person in the galaxy, with the exception of perhaps Erda. And most importantly, this relic is housed inside of his tomb and protected by the chapter of Space Marines that he created. The Terminus Decree may be instructions left by Malkador and entrusted to the Grey Knights on how to carry out their final mission. This would make sense seeing that it was revealed in the Siege of Terra that the Grey Knights, although being created during the Horus Heresy, were not made to fight on Terra. They were made to fight a war that would come thousands of years later. There's honestly a billion different things that the Terminus Decree could be, so it would be irresponsible for anyone to try to make a definitive claim one way or the other. However, in doing research for this section of the video, I checked out the wiki page on the Terminus Decree in order to get their source list so I could read them for myself and it made a pretty startling claim that the Terminus Decree was directly linked to the research of the mad scientist Basilo Fo. If you're unfamiliar with this character, he was a prisoner in the Imperial Palace during the Siege of Terra. During an interview with Euphrates Keeler, it was revealed to us that he was capable of creating an anti-Astartes phage that could kill all of the Space Marines and their Primarchs. Now, considering that the palace was at that very moment- Oh no, he gotta go. Oh no, 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 he, he, he about to squad wipe? I can't lie to you, yo. We gotta get rid of him. We gotta get rid of him. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. He got the power to wipe who off? He, he, wait, he got the power to wipe who off? He got to go. Can't lie to you. Under siege by Horus and his armies, the prospect of such a dangerous weapon being unleashed was an option worth considering. It was ultimately decided that the cost would be too great, and thus the phage was not utilized, though Valdor kept the option on the table as a last resort. The novel The End in the Death Volume 1 seems to indicate that Malkador set in motion a series of events that would make sure this option would remain as a viable contingency plan long after his death, leading many people to believe that this is in fact what is written on the Terminus Decree. 
Full disclosure, I haven't finished the Siege of Terra yet, as part of doing a lore channel means I need to split my time between the Horus Heresy and more modern 40k books. I'm trudging my way through Mortis, it's not a bad book, but it's definitely the weakest Siege of Terra novel. And as of the time of this recording, the new Belisarius Call vs Fabius Bile book just came out, and I'm personally way more interested in that. Anyways, from what I've been able to gather, this is something that is only alluded to in that novel, but it's not directly confirmed. And if this really is what the author is trying to indicate to us, it changes what the Terminus Decree is all about. Because wiping out all of the Astartes, both traitor and loyalist alike, would certainly be a massive blow to the galaxy. But the Space Marines are not the end-all be-all of the Imperium's military might. Likewise, Chaos would still exist, with or without the Despoiler's legions. And it would have no impact on all of the hostile Xeno species that wish to bring about the death of mankind. So this would change the Terminus Decree from being the end of humanity to the end of the Space Marines. It's certainly a possibility, but like I said, I'm not entirely convinced. I think it's more just a part of what the Terminus Decree is, and not the end-all be-all of it. At the end of the day, we still don't know what the Terminus Decree actually is, and for humanity's sake, hopefully we never will. But what do you think of all this? What do you think the Terminus Decree actually is, and what is it eventually going to be used for? Bro, I think it's crazy. That's what I think. I, bro, this, this whole, bro, I'm, bro, I'm getting, I'm getting to places, bro. I feel like I'm getting to places where I'm not supposed to get, bro. <laughs> like, bro, I think I'm getting down to lore that I'm not supposed to be even touching at this point, bro. We got different, but remember, bro, these are all theories, okay? These are all theories. These are not confirmed true. These are all theories. Comment down below, man. What else you want me, you know, to react to next? Uh, anything War Warhammer uh, related, you know, Call of Duty, whatever. I can do it. I can definitely react to it. Thank you guys so much for all the support over the past few days. It's absolutely crazy. See you guys in the next time out. And yo, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel. Did you, you already did it? Appreciate it. See you guys in the next time out.